Hey, today I'm going to show you how to replicate data in a widget to everyone. In a, you could be, you know, in a server network scenario, you could you could communicate, you know, what happens on one widget to everyone, you know, in the game. And this could be like, you know, in a Call of Duty game where they have a score, and every time you get a kill, it ups the kill on the. Uh, in, imagine it's like team death match, and it ups the kill for everyone. You know that kind of thing. That's why I'm going to be showing you the baseline functionality, no, the baseline setup of that today. So, how to start this off then? Probably the interface. The interface is important for showing the data, you know, passing the data to everyone um, in the server. So, right now, I'm just um, passing player one score and player two score. So, that could be player, that could be team one, team two, you know, you get the picture. But if I show you what we're going to be making, which is actually probably a better start, is every time I left click, player two goes up. Every time I left click on player one, player one goes up. And you can see it's showing up uh, correctly on the other screen as I click the button. Okay. Now, let's start from the bottom up. So if I go to the first person character, which happens to be who the character is of this game mode, every time the primary action is clicked, it adds to the score. Now, every time it adds to the score, this calls an event inside of the player controller, which checks player name. What's player name? So player name, it happens on my custom begin play which is not on begin play because doing functionality on begin play in the player controller can cause issues as the player might not be fully connected but begin play can be called so this can cause issues now how do you call this custom begin play what so what's safe to call it from well, if you come, if you you're gonna need a game state for this tutorial. You're gonna need a game state, a game mode, a character, and a player controller, and the interface, and a widget. So if I come into the game state, now if you don't know what the game state is, it's a great place to hold data for the game, the state of the game, and this can be a great place to share data across clients because all clients can. Um, retrieve the data from the game state okay so we were about to look at um what we're we about to look at where the game state now the custom beat the custom begin play is it's actually not in the game state so ignore me game mode it's in the game mode so when a kit player logs in and it successfully logs in as it states here notification that a player is successfully logged in and has been given the player controller so this is when a player controller is completely in the game right this calls the begin play. Now you can see there's a delay here. In case it fails, it will it will uh, wait a frame and try again. Um, and then it comes into here and it calls this, which is a server RPC and it's reliable. So if you don't know what the R the replicates keyboard uh, drop down thingy is on these RPCs, um, an RPC stands for remote procedural call. And you can select from one of these drop downs so it can be not replicated, so it's not replicated at all. Um, I mean, you'll have no effect, it's not basically it's not an RPC at that point. Um, you have multicast, which called by a server will, will replicate this function to everyone on the server, but if it's called by a client, it will only replicate to that client only. Now, run on server will run on the server, so the authoritative state, it will run this code. And run on client means it will only run for that specific client. And each of these have very good use cases, like nuance to each single one. Um, basically, if you're gonna set data or something that needs to happen on the server, it's better to call it on the server RPC just to make sure it happens on the server. Um, it will never happen on anything else then. So, as you can see here, um, it's adding the number of players when you join and it's setting the player name from this so that's going to be incremented to one this number in here it's going to be incremented to one and if you come back then it's going to add append the one to the player name so it's going to be player one and it's going to say added okay then it's going to create the storyboard which is just a basic 
um, widget which has some functions, which is probably good if I should. It's probably good if I could show you the functions. So these um, text elements are indeed take this in variable as a variable. So when you come in here, it will pop up in here as a variable. You can drag it out. You click get, and then you can you can set the text. And now that's all what these functions are doing. They're setting the text. Both of these functions can be um, merged into one function, but they're just two. For, like, I didn't think of that until after. Um, but yeah, so that's what happens on begin play. So every time a player shoots, add score, comes into here, player name. It equals equals player one. This could be. This is where the um, the function the functionality could be extended to greater numbers and. The player name could actually be the Steam username, you know. Just keeping, if you want it as generic as possible, to work for a bigger server. But if it's for a small game, this will be work fine. So say this was two players, it would work fine, um, or two teams. Um, no. When you want to add to the player score, it checks the the um, player name and then it will come to the right player and add the, to the right variable. So there's player one score variable and player two score variable. Yeah. Um, and every time it adds to these variables, it needs to update this data to everyone on the server. Otherwise, it would just stay. This variable would just stay at zero. So if I want if I want to prove that to you, so if I remember disconnect that and I come back in. Now it won't update at all when I'm left clicking, all right? But because I want it to update to all the players, cut this back up. We basically call this uh, function which gets all the actors with the interface BPI score implemented, which is all of the player controllers. And you can do this by going to the class settings and coming under interfaces and clicking add and finding your interface and added that. And you can see it's added by it displaying there. You come into here and it will loop through all of these, check they're valid, and then call the message of the interface, which is update score, which I showed you at the start. And it passes in the data of the game state, which has been updated. In, that doesn't go there. It comes into basically a, a, an interface works by you call this function as a message or you implement the um, interface. And when you implement an interface, you're given then these um, function calls as a, uh, an implementable event, which is this. Whenever it grab you grab a baseline actor, so you don't need to cast to you know first person or player controller, BP player controller, and get that specific class. I can just get the rough um, base of this class and I can call the message on it because this actor as a whole has implemented this interface and it's attached to this actor so it's accessible. You don't need to cast, if that makes sense. So it calls this message. So if anyone out there has implemented this uh, any one of these actors has implemented this interface, then this event will be called. And now this event calls an RPC that could be executed only on this client, only on this player controller, and it's reliable, so it will, it will always be picked back up. It will never be lost, and it will update the scoreboard widget for this client only. But because it's getting all of these actors, all of these actors are updating their own widget. So basically, this is the server telling all the clients to update their own widgets. And that's how this works. Okay, so once it's updating the widget, then it will display for everyone. And you could have this, you know, at the moment it's server client, but you could extend this functionality to be whatever you want. Now, I hope that was helpful. If I, if I wasn't clear enough or you have any questions at all, um, or you want me to go for a step by step of how to create this, then please comment down below and have a good day.